I select the Add New Layer button from the top of the screen, and I begin the new layer with a lockdown that consists of one, two, three, four white buttons. I'll do a very basic underlay of a series of white buttons that are in the absolute center of where the column stitch border will be sewn. Once around the star should do nicely. Now I'm ready to begin sewing the columns that will make up the outline on the star and once again I'm going to select the zoom in tool so I can enlarge the area in which I'm working. Now I had set my stitch density for columns to 1.2 for the underlay columns. That will be far too light for the column stitches that make up the outline of the star. So instead I'm going to set a density value of 0.42 which is about 60 stitches per inch. I begin the column with a white button and continue it with a series of one, two, three blue buttons. Begin with a white and continue with one, two, three blue buttons. I begin with a white and continue with one, two, three blue buttons. Begin with a white and continue with one, two, three blue buttons. Begin with the white, blue, blue, blue. You begin with the white, continue with blue, blue, blue buttons. Begin with one white button, and continue with one, two, three blue buttons. Begin with a white and continue with one, two, three blue buttons. Begin with a white and continue with one, two, three blue buttons. Begin with a white and continue with one, two, three blue buttons. Now that I've finished the column stitch outline for this star, I'll do a basic lockdown of one, two, three white buttons. And you can see that by having just a certain part of your artwork or the design you're working on enlarged, it really allows you to get up close and put these points on the artwork with a degree of precision that saves you editing on down the line. I'm going to select the Zoom to Fit Window button and deselect the Artwork tab from the Design View tabs on the side of the screen. Now, I can go to the tree view area and select the entire design. I'll turn off the Digimouse button since I'm finished digitizing. And I can select Transform from the property view area And from there, select Size and set a size for this star. You know, this style of digitizing a star would work well 
anywhere from about two inches tall on up to three, four, five inches. But I'm going to set a size of 65 millimeters or two and a half inches. 25 millimeters equals one inch. Now to set the colors for this design, I can go back up to the tree view area and select the first layer here. I'll minimize transform in the property view area. And I can select appearance, double click on the display color and select a nice shade of blue for the inside of this star. If I go back up to the tree view area and select the second layer, I can then set a color for the outline of this star. I'll click once and set a nice shade of red to be the color for the outline of this star there. You know, there's a couple of things I would like to point out to you before we end this video lesson. If you'll take note, you can see how on the corners of the column outline, I digitized the individual column segments so that they don't quite meet. And what it does, it allows the individual column sections to push together as the thread tension drives the ends of those columns out slightly. They'll meet up perfectly in the middle without a lot of bunching up of thread in the corners. And you can see that's how I handled all the points on this star on the top on this side, on the bottoms, and the other side as well. Here are some density and stitch length values for the outline fill that I use most commonly.